Welcome back to the lab. It's early July. You're watching this video. It's definitely not early July anymore. There's uh, stuff and things going on here that's very top secret. It's not top secret. We're just not going to be terribly public about it. Hopefully the low cost 7 is all gone and good. Um, it's not far away right now, but it'll be here for a little bit and then it'll disappear. And there might be something pretty cool coming back from down the line somewhere. And that'll be cool, and you may have seen that by now. What we're going to do today is something, and over the next couple of months, is something that's quite appropriate given the company name. We're going to do some best description. Uh, product testing. Pre-production product testing. It's not so much development. We may stumble across some things and go, it did something, and I think maybe do something and it'll be better but that's not our part of the the deal that we're doing basically we've got something pretty cool to put in the car and just use it just make sure we don't come across any little stuff and things that other people haven't found or hasn't been anticipated and the test equipment hasn't stumbled upon and all that sort of stuff these guys want their stuff to be as near to perfect as it can be when you get your hands on it and so I'm going to see if I can break it for you. Now we're all about solving problems here at the lab and I'll freely admit this is a little bit cheating with the unbox the unboxing. Uh, my scissors weren't very sharp and doing this all one-handed was a real nuisance so anyway the courier bag turned up and look at that we're unboxed. <laughs> <laughs> unwrapped at least look there's a there's a one of those so you might see an updated version of the um, attire on my skull that's going to be um so we put a nice paper down and keep it all nice and clean now the pdm you guys have seen the pdm um oh, just giving away a little you'll have to rewind there if you want to know right now or fast forward one or the other PDM, we put one in the march. Now we've got two PDMs. Sorry. Two, <laughs> two PDMs to put in the march, which is going to be awesome. I'll show you what I do with that later on. But underneath this box, underneath this box, is this box here, which is one of those. How's that for awesome? Now these things do cool things. We'll open this up in a second. This has got... I'll be completely honest, I have not read all the specs and saved them all to my head, but I do know this has got dual e-throttle control. It's got dual wideband uh, built into it, so we don't need our CAN Lambda units. We can um, remove those from the vehicle and simplify stuff and things, less wiring and that, and keep it all in the, in the one little box. It's got a GPS, built-in GPS capability. I'm not sure exactly where they're going with with what they will make that be able to do. But the, the theory would be, for me as a pleb, not being the guys making and selling, so don't take this as gospel from Link, this is just Glenn sitting on the outside of things looking in. I reckon you'll be able to plot your racetrack and you'll be able to pick points on it and make the ECU do certain things based on those certain points, which would be awesome. Um, if you've got things like adjustable electronically controlled suspension for, for instance damper control you'll be able to say when we reach these coordinates here change those settings to such and such and then when we come out the other side and we hit another coordinate there change them to whatever i'm assuming that can happen certainly with today's technology 100 percent whether they want to spec the product to do that is is a whole nother thing i would imagine at bare minimum they, they'll be able to do lap timing and stuff via your ECU and logging and pop up on your dash. Your dash will be able to talk to your ECU because your ECU's got the GPS input. I guess. I don't want to speak out of turn. Let's have a look at it. There it is there. Magnificent. Now this is pre-production. This is not what you guys are going to... I don't want to damage this. This is... This is a special thing. Uh, this is not what you guys are going to get. This is slightly different to what's going to pop out to the general population. So in here they've included 
this is what's called a E plug. It's similar to what um, what the other plugs are. I'm assuming that's. I've got to look and check. See, it could be A and B, but I believe that will be A, B, E. So A and B plugs are the exact same as on our G4X Extreme, except for one wire that needs to be changed. There's a 8 volt output, which is now an ignition supply, like ignition on wire, so it turns it on. Uh, and this plug over the side here, the E, does a bunch of other stuff and things to do with um, your wideband and all that sort of carry on. So I haven't looked at the exact pinout and won't remember it off the top of my head, but that's why we've got this, so we can hook up those other stuff and things. So the theory is, this has been programmed to be the exact same tune as what's in the car right now. And aside from that one wire, I can unplug the ECU that's in the car right now, plug this in, and the car will go. This is locked. All ECUs coming out of Link are locked in case some scallywag picks it up and takes off with it. They won't be able to use it without unlocking it, and nobody's going to give them the unlock code for a known to be stolen ECU. So it's pretty good security. We've got some brackets and stuff here. They are for running wires behind this. This is a blanking one, so if there's no wires there at all, you see there's no gap. If you do want to run wires there, these ones are shallower, shall I say, they don't go around the corner as far, so you can run wires out of the plug and tuck it up the side of the ECU to wherever, which is pretty handy, just because of the basic shape of the ECU, they've taken that into account and taken advantage of it to use it as a a, a harness clamp is probably the best terminology. So there you go, pretty exciting. I'll be honest, I'm going to put this all back in the box and put it on the shelf and carry on with what's behind us here today because I do need to earn some money for, for once and he wants his car, which is fair enough. So I'm going to crack on with that. Later on today, I'll, I'll fire off the email. I'll get a, our um, unlock code. It might be tonight we plug that in and see if it goes. It should. So this thing's been, um, been doing some stuff and things, some special things. Quite appropriate for the company name, actually. Um, and it involves one of these little black boxes down here. This one's a bit, is it non deplume? Is that the word we use? A bit anonymous. But if you're into ECUs and keeping up with tech, and stuff and things and what's happening in the uh, motorsport world, the automotive world, you'll probably know what, what that is. Or at least have an idea of what it's, what it's going to be. That's not the final product. So we've been trying to break that for Link. We've been running it in this beastie because I'm pretty good at breaking things apparently. So we all figured that we're, if anyone's going to break it, it'll be Glenn. We might as well put it in here and see if we can wreck it. We got a one of these. Now this is this is moving on a little bit further from the one that's down there. And actually there's there's one in between. There's another one. This this is not a release one, but this this is one that looks a bit more like what they will be released as. And I believe this is even further. So I'm not sure if this is the final version but look we've actually got a box we did have a box earlier on uh, I sent that back we were changing things I'd run the ECU and say it's not running the ice cream machine properly we need to change that and the guys would go cool so what's it doing and I'd explain and they'd go wicked and they'd get into it and they'd sort it out and they'd send me another one that's happened a couple of times and there's other things that obviously they're just upgrading stuff without my input I'm not the man behind this, I'm just helping them. This one's a little bit, a little bit purpley. I'm not sure there's some sort of a tinge of colour to this. That may be the final colour. I don't know, but what we've got here is we've got a GPS input and we've got Wi-Fi input. So that's pretty awesome. We'll be able to um, plug the laptop in Oh, can I close this with one hand? This is hard. Look at this for a challenge. Did it. Can't be feeling too rubbish today. 
I have good days and bad days. Today's not a particularly good day, but that's fine. Look, closer to production, I believe. You could pause and read that. Uh, what this says is 12 injection drives, 8 ignition, and 4 multi purpose. So you can do either or. Uh, 24 channels in total. Control gasoline direct injection on up to 12 injection channels. And it's got a little asterisk there. It says you might need some accessories to do that. I don't know what. That possibly just means you need to run maybe a PDM or something like that to get it. Uh, with the correct power supplies or something. I don't know. Link know these things. I don't know all these things. Uh, it uses Basically it uses the traditional Link PC software so it's really good, really easy for us fellas who have been using stuff for ages to get into there and run it. Dual onboard e-throttle control with internal solid state relays. So that's pretty cool. That takes a couple of channels that you would normally use for relays or in your PDMs, it's actually built into the little box. So that's awesome. Uh, built in GPS, it's also, yeah, it says it there and I missed it. Dual onboard digital wideband lambda controllers, which at this point in time in this particular car right here, right now, we're not running that. I will be. I'm not going to open the boot and drop this prototype ECU on the floor, that would be bad. But we're not running that right now. I've been running the traditional CAN Lambda. The sole reason for that, if we went to the track and this did funny things, my original G4X Extreme ECU directly plugs in to where this is right now. One wire needs to be changed. Uh, or unplugged basically and it will just go so if we went to the track and there was some sort of a oh didn't expect it to do that log it take all the data save the tune file turn the power off pull the plugs plug in the extreme shift the one wire boot it back up again car will go now the extreme um, which is I don't know, you might even be able to see it can we see it it's over there on the on the shelf that doesn't have dual onboard digital wideband lambda doesn't have it so if I change all the wiring harness so that that's permanently installed in here then I can't run the extreme make the can lambda things work easily without having extra wire and stuff and things in the car it absolutely run the harnesses side by side basically can do that don't really want to do that so I will convert that over to the dual wideband lambda very very shortly hopefully before gtr fest everything's looking good the thing's running mint and we actually had um we did have the voodoo pro it's called g5 voodoo pro we did have that in the car for super lap uh, for the final and i believe my understanding is that's the first voodoo pro in the world to podium so like to finish to run at an event and get either a first second or third we were second place for that, but uh, sorry, yeah, second place for the series. However, that Voodoo Pro was only in the car just for that one round, and we were third place for that actual round. So, technically, Voodoo Pro can claim uh, third place straight off the bat, straight off the trailer, with, with no stuff and things fiddled with to make it more better. So, that's pretty good. Could have been better. Well, I mean, we were P2 on the day. The day that we actually ran, we were P2 in that round for the for the series. Uh, yeah, for the final round. <laughs> so I told you I was having a bad day. The final round of the series, we were P2 for the round on the day that we ran. And we didn't run on the second day due to something completely unrelated to the ECU, etc., and it was actually me being fussy more than anything we could have run, but I decided against it. Um, and, and someone beat us by 0.08 of a second, so, and then took the P2 off us and bumped us to P3. But on the day that we ran, we were P2. <laughs> Let's argue it that way, why not? Cool, so um, I'm going to put what's over my shoulder here in the car very shortly and talk to the boys and see if there's, a, a, there's probably a PC link update to make the Wi-Fi work and we'll have a play and see if that'll work. Good.
more betterer. Done work. So, just design a board and throw it in the box and send it out the door, right? It doesn't really work like that. There's been a few different versions of the actual... I'm going to say a few. I've seen at least two or three different versions of the actual containment vessel, the box, the whatever we want to call enclosure for the ECU. Different colours and different shapes. This was designed to go onto the one that I had. I was forewarned not to get too carried away with this because this could change. And it has. So as you can see this one's actually she's different colours and all sorts of things are playing around with what they're going to do. It's a bit scratched up because it's not the final version and it's been in my car and it's I've scratched it. Well someone scratched it anyway. As you can see that was designed to be the right width for that and to go with these mounting holes on the side here. There's other mounting holes here as well right? There's different ways you can fit it into your vehicle boat, car, motorcycle, whatever you're running. And um, if I line this one up next to this one and try not to scratch it and get my gimbal to do what I want it to do, you'll see uh, there's a dimensional variation between the two units. That's fine. I actually want to make a new mount anyway. And you can see the screw holes have changed the pitch of the screw holes so these wouldn't have bolted in even if we'd had to space it. So we need to make a new bracket. That's fine. It's not a complicated job. We could potentially even use these holes here. These are M5, I believe. So that might be easier than mounting it on the sides and having the brackets on the sides. We don't need that for my car anyway, so a nice flat one might be the way to go. We'll see. Heck, I better wrap this one up. It's getting a bit long. Uh, put the new, the latest version of the ECU in the car did hook up the Lambda, the onboard digital Lambda. Lambda went to GTR Festival, absolutely kicked butt. I tell you what, you don't get any prizes when you turn up to a GTR Festival in a Nissan March and beat almost everything in sight. You get a lot of smiles though, and that was a hell of a good day. It was really good fun. Uh, cars is currently broken. Uh, turbo seals, nothing to do with the ECU or anything like that, uh, and it's gathering dust. So we'll get new turbos in there and we'll carry on um, embarrassing GTRs and stuff. It's a brave call, isn't it? Thanks for watching. All right, cheers, boy.